For more on the cryptocurrency market uh, and the regulatory environment, we're joined by Kristen Smith, Executive Director of the Blockchain Association, and Anthony Pompliano, Pomp Investments uh, founder and partner. Um, I, I'm going to start. I haven't seen you in a while, Anthony. Let me just say, so you, you have um, noted some underlying things happening in, in the Bitcoin uh, arena in the last month or so. Things like on Twitter, negative sentiment versus what was really going on underneath. Can you explain why you saw some things indicated? I mean, it bounced from what, 28,000? And 28 to 50 is a pretty big move, uh, is it not? Yeah, I, I think what's happening right now is uh, folks are focused on the narrative, but uh, in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency world, there's something called on-chain metrics that uh, just tell you what's happening. It's actually visible on a public ledger. There's a whole new industry popping up. Uh, folks like uh, Will Clemente, Dylan LeClaire, Willie Wu, David Puel, et cetera. And what those on-chain metrics have showed us is that nearly 70% of Bitcoin is being held right now by long-term holders. Over 80% of Bitcoin, if you account for lost coins in circulation, are being held by those long-term holders. The last time that happened, uh, we saw about a 500% move upwards. And when you go through those on-chain metrics, uh, you can see that uh, realized cap, um, you know, hash rate bouncing back, et cetera, it is very, very bullish. And ultimately, it's manifesting itself in this uh, kind of supply squeeze theme. So I think that through the rest of this year, we are going to see some wild uh, price action to the upside. Kristen, it, it almost seems like when we get more uh, sort of clarity on what regulators are thinking, that it, the, the crypto starts trading higher. Maybe it's just a risk on trade. We see that, too. And the Fed certainly helps. Uh, but people would like to know what what if they're going to at least let it survive and then have ways of regulating it. I mean, that, that might be bullish for the space. Yeah, I think what we saw in the Senate, what played out in the Senate over the past couple of weeks is that there still is some uncertainty around how regulations are going to play out. But what we did discover is that crypto has a political superpower, and that is its community of users who in a moment's notice can activate and organize and weigh in with their policymakers. And I think the fact that, that there was a pay for in the package that relied on getting revenue from cryptocurrency at a very high level, that's a very, very good sign. Now we still need to work on the details, but you know, being on the ground in Washington, I've never seen the crypto industry or the crypto community more organized. Um, and so at least from the US perspective, I think that we still have some work to do, but that we're going to ultimately get a good outcome on the regulatory front. Anthony, I thought you wrote a really interesting piece, um, and we should know it. I mean, so many Wall Streeters that I know are following your work is kind of the way to watch what's happening in the crypto space. Um, but your points about Western Union vis-a-vis -vis the events in Afghanistan, what the Lightning Network's trying to do with Bitcoin, I mean, what would you tell people who are invested in the traditional um, sort of money transfer firms, you know, how quickly do you think that their market share could be eroded or replaced by uh, what Bitcoin Network is trying to do? Yeah, I mean, it's simple. Get out and get away. Um, you know, I don't know what the time frame is, but when you look at something like Bitcoin, uh, it allows through the Lightning Network for anyone to send pennies, literally pennies, anywhere in the world, completely for free with instantaneous settlement. I'm an investor in a company called Strike. They literally can stream payments uh, instantaneously completely for free. And so when you start to look at something uh, like what happened in Afghanistan with Western Union, at the time of need of literally millions of people, uh, they pulled out of the country. They stopped supporting it and they blamed it on kind of agent capacity. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. But what I do know is that Bitcoin brings a censorship resistant program uh, or network to the world. And I think what we're watching is young people specifically recognize the technical superiority. Uh, they are used to these digitally native platforms and they're starting to shift. And so over a long period of time, those legacy payment systems are in a lot of trouble. And so they're going to have to choose. Do we go ahead and embrace this and adopt it and disrupt ourselves? Or do we sit here, take it on the chin and, and likely get disrupted by this new technology? And I, I, I tend to bet that Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency world is going to win in that uh, in that battle.